Hello, so this is now our Q&A portion of this workshop. Um, please type in your questions to the group chat. And again, please make it available for all panelists so we can all see it and we call it answer, okay? Um, so I'm gonna start from the beginning. Um, this one is from Thomas. For an owner builder seeking a B2, who is the certified for experience for owner builder if I am doing all the work besides my wife and member, members of my family? And are projects not requiring a permit still suitable experience? So Thomas, for owner and builder experience, that's only available for a B. You cannot use owner builder experience for a B2. But to answer the who can certify uh, my experience, because we do see that a lot, anyone can certify your experience. They have to be someone that witnessed you completing your projects firsthand. So a lot of people get confused and they tend to think that, oh, does my work experience have to be certified by another contractor? Not really, It had anyone who witnessed you complete your project firsthand can certify your work experience, okay? Okay, uh, for Miguel, I'm not, we're not sure what your question is, but if you wanna put that in the chat for us, then we will be able to help you out. Um, the next question is from uh, Aiden. Does homeowners experience need permit inspections to be verified? What if the work did not require permits? Most of it does not. Can this work be used for B contractor to B2 experience? So this is a little similar to uh, Thomas's uh, question. Now, if you're doing B2 work, uh, most of the time uh, we've seen that there's no permits there. Uh, if you're trying to use owner builder experience uh, and you're trying to use that form of the work of the owner builder experience, that applies solely on the, the B work. Um, it's always a case by case basis as far as whether your work has permits or not, or if you need it or not. Um, that's something that unfortunately we can't really guarantee of a yes or no. That's something that we have to need to see at first hand as far as your application. And then from there, if the assigned technician needs additional information, they'll be, they'll reach out to you and they'll give you a series of options of what what is uh, what things that they need for it to be acceptable or if it's not acceptable. Yeah. Do you, do you only need one certifier? No, Ron's talking to me. Could you guys hear me? So, uh, do you only need one certifier? Uh, no, that that's only depending upon who can verify 48 months worth of experience for you. So, some people work for one contractor for four years. So, yes, one person could be your certifier for all four years. Uh, some people go to different projects throughout those four years. Uh, so each individual that has firsthand knowledge of you performing the work would need to fill out a certification of work experience. So depending upon when and how you gain that experience, you could have one certifier that had firsthand knowledge of four years of experience or you may need multiple people to fill out multiple certifications to cover four years of experience in the trade you're applying for. You guys hear me? Okay, so the next question we have on here is from Armando, um, and there's two. It says, will you post this on YouTube? Yes, um, these are archived on our YouTube channel, so you can go ahead and review our previous one. And then can we get the training study guide through you for the B contractor? Armando, if you go on our website, um, we do have study guides available on there. So if you go to our website at www.cslb.ca.gov, um, you can just type it in the search, this website portion of it. You type in study guide and it will pull up our study guides that we have on there, okay? Okay, the next question is from Aiden. It says, how many years of credit will a degree in engineering get you? 
So, um, as far as what a degree, we won't, we're not really too sure as far as what specific degree you have or not. So, we can't really guarantee or give you a specific amount of credit. Um, the best thing we can say is, um, depending on your degree, if it's uh, construction related, the more it's, it's related to construction, that's where you get most of the credit. So, uh, the maximum that you can get for a degree is 36 months. So, the more uh, closer to it, like I said, if, if it's more construction related, that's where you'll get either all of the 36 months or it, it can be up to 18 months as an example. So, uh, like I mentioned, we're not, we can't really give you a definitive since we're not really too strong. But the best thing is uh, provide your, include your official transcript and then don't just solely rely on your education to try to meet the, uh, the 48 month requirement. All right, our next question is from Wang. Uh, currently active duty military stationed in another state. Can I still apply before I return? Active duty military, but a California resident. So yes, you could begin the process. You could uh, print out the application, uh, go ahead and send it in, have them begin to review it. Uh, with, uh, however, at the point that you uh, need to do your fingerprinting and the testing for the application, uh, majority of our testing sites for our uh, testing uh, vendor are in California. They do have a few, I believe there's one in Oregon, possibly one in Nevada that you could test in. But for the majority of the testing, you would have to come back to California to take your test. Uh, and if you do your fingerprinting outside the state during that process, you'd have to do a hard card, uh, old fingerprint method. Those take quite a bit longer to verify. Uh, you, it's a lot quicker if you would come back into the state for your fingerprinting and uh, do the live scan. But yes, you can begin the process uh, while you're outside the state. Uh, we have people from out of state begin their process uh, in the state that they're in all the time. Uh, but certain aspects of it would require you to come back into the state to make it either convenient or to actually do your test. Okay, the next question we have is from Jose and it says, do pressure washers need a contractor license? Um, if the cost of the pressure washing project is $500, $500 or more, including labor and materials, um, and a pump and pressure washer is being used, a contractor license is being re is required. Um, the classification for that would be the C61D38, which is sand and water blasting. Um, again, for, for all work done, if it's over $500, a, a CSLB contractor license is required. Uh, the next one is about engineering classes. Uh, all education to some degree uh, will count towards your experience. Uh, very few individual classes will garner more than a minimal amount of experience. Uh, it is mainly by degree or apprenticeship. So if you have an engineering degree, uh, once again, the chart that we showed will show you the basic breakdown of uh, experience credit you will get, then it's going to depend on your specific engineering degree as well as the uh, classification that you're going for for the final determination of how much credit you will get towards that engineering. But classes uh, on rare occasion may get minimal amount. Most of the time, just an individual class does not garner you uh, experience. So the next question is from Shamim. I apologize if I'm saying your name incorrectly. So the question is during presentation mentioned that from July 2024, everyone needs to have a workers' compensation insurance, even if you have no employment. What about acceptance? So that currently we do, there are a list of classifications that need a, a that are required a workers' compensation policy. Um, so depending on the classification that you apply for, um, you may depending on the working space, you may fall in line with one of those that do require a workers' compensation policy. Currently, the ones that are required to have it, um, if you want to look at it, there's a, if you go onto our website, 
into our, our bulletins or press releases and they'll give you more information on which one of those fall in line with uh, requiring a workers' compensation policy. Uh, currently, there is no exception to those that are required to have a workers' compensation policy. But as I mentioned, uh, you can always look at our website for more information about that. Okay, so the next question is from um, from Haven. Is four years of supervised experience enough or do you need school credit as well? So the requirement is 48 months, which is four years of journeyman level um, or above. You can mix school in it if you have the four years to just um, journeyman level experience, that's fine. You don't need to include school. School is not a requirement, but some people do like to um, add that in to help. So to answer your um, to answer your question, um, school credit is not required, but you can use it if you want to. All right, the next question is from Joel. If being a qualifier and obtaining a C-16 license for a corporation, do you need proof of insurance, contractor license, bond, and complete additional courses after passing the exam? Um, are you, I don't believe I'm understanding the question. Are you referring to the fact of you already have hold the C-16 license or are you working under someone who holds that specific license um, as far as uh, the proof of insurance and the bond and everything like that. If you're referring to a pending application that you have um, after passing the exams, if the if you want the license to be active, there are insurance requirements that you need depending on the the business structure as well as uh, the title that you hold as a qualifier in the license. So for something uh, specific like that, um, I've I've included the our licensing email so feel free if uh, if i didn't answer your question if you want to be more specific feel free to send us an email there and we'll be able to help you out and give you uh, more of a breakdown if you need more assistance the next one uh, does a homeowner experience need permit inspections to be verified what if the work does not require permits most of it does not can this work be used towards b contractor or b2 license so when we're talking about a B contractor, that is a classification that is inherently towards building of a structure. Uh, building of a structure is always going to require permits in the state of California. So uh, if you're looking to use a homeowner or a owner builder experience towards a B contractor, uh, permits and inspection and final inspection reports will be required uh, before uh, credit will be issued towards uh, a B classification uh, owner builder situation. B2 license requires three trades to be being performed on a project at the time. So, uh, and it is a residential remodeling license so while a lot of those items may not necessarily need a permit changing out light switches changing out light fixtures things like that to existing systems uh, it requires three trades to be being performed at the same project so you're doing lighting you're doing some drywall you're doing some painting uh, so once again not necessarily permits required you're going to need a certification of work experience with somebody who has firsthand knowledge of you performing those three trades on 48 months worth of projects. Okay, the next question is from Jay Broom. Um, they ask, as qualifier, does project management of construction services qualify as work? Um, I don't quite understand your question. Um, management of construction services um for this question can you please send us an email to the licensing at cslb.ca.gov and explain a little bit more of it just because right now um are you asking as a project management so you're overseeing something does that qualify you as a qualifier um can you please send us um an email again to licensing at cslb.ca.gov and give us a little more details so we can help answer that question for you okay um per miguel yes uh, please ask your questions um through the chat and we will read it off in the q a section okay um so the next question will be haven can you be licensed as a b contractor 
under an already existing LLC with a general contractor, or would you have to start a new LLC? Um, Haven, that question, can you be licensed as a B contractor? If you're listed on a license, that doesn't mean that you hold the B. So again, with Haven, can you please send us your question to the licensing email? It's licensing at cslb.ca ca.gov and give us a little more detail about your question so that we can help answer that one for you too okay uh looks like the next one was from aiden and i believe that's the same one that we had a little earlier about the b and the b2 uh next from dan r i'm trying to start a handyman company that will mainly be fixing small issues and never doing remodeling or building anything is it possible to start a company like this without four years of construction experience? Once again, if the projects you're looking to do are going to be over $500 for materials and labor, you're going to need a license no matter what uh, services you're providing. After that, it's going to depend on the type of services you're providing, uh, which classification you're looking to uh, be licensed in. Uh, there is no handyman uh, classification. You would have to specify actual classes. Now you can add multiple classes to a license once you have a license so that you can have a painting, a drywall, and an electrician's license uh, uh, classifications all under one license, but there is no uh, handyman option for a license. The closest thing and it's still not a handyman license, is the B2 residential remodeling one. Uh, and once again, that requires three trades to be being performed uh, with each project. Okay, the next question is from Dylan. Uh, the question reads, does five years experience in carpentry, but more specifically custom cabinetry qualify me for a B general building license? So for the classification for the B, um, you need a, a, the requirement is for framing a rough carpentry with at least two unrelated trades. So if you don't hold, if you haven't done any framing or uh, two other unrelated trades at one point during four years, um, that may be something that you may not qualify for if you've only done uh, one trade that uh, during your time. Um, but if you are looking for more specifics as far as what type of work you've done throughout your five years or throughout 10 years, if you'd like, excuse me, you can send us an email at our licensing at uh, CA, uh, licensing at uh, cslb.ca.gov. And if you want to be more specific as to the type of work that uh, you've done and maybe if that qualifies or not if you have any additional questions we can try to uh, help you out there uh the next one uh is from jose uh is there any way to get a license for a pressure washer without the four-year experience all classifications and license will require four years of experience or experience combined with education experience uh for any classification so uh, pressure washer is the same thing. It's going to require 48 months of experience, which can combine with educational experience if you have it, but all classifications will require four years of experience to obtain the license. Uh, the next one is from Fabian. I've been in a union, I've been in a union carpenter four-year apprenticeship since 2018, however, because of COVID, my apprenticeship has been lengthened due to in-person classes. Does my apprenticeship classes still count towards the 36 months with a transcription provided? So with apprenticeships, they're looking for the completion certificate before they will issue uh, credit. You could provide your transcript and it might be a minimal amount of credit due to particular classes that you may have taken. Uh, but with an apprenticeship, they're looking for a completed apprenticeship degree or certificate before they'll uh, award the credit towards your experience.
Okay. Oh. So the next one is from Francisco. It, it reads the working for a general contractor, general B license as a project manager count as credits toward obtaining a CA concrete license. So if you're if you're already employed with someone who currently holds a contractor license, and if the work that you're doing falls in line with the classification that you're trying to apply for, you can use that as work experience. Obviously, we don't know your situation, but if the work that you're doing while employed or working alongside the the uh, license holder, um, if that applies for to the classification that you're holding, then either you can have that contractor sign off on your work experience on the certification work experience form, or someone that you working alongside with during those projects during that time, you can go ahead and uh, complete those. The next question is from Mary. Um, Mary's question is, what is the requirement when you need to be added to the CSOB of an existing active license? Um, Mary, there is, so it depends on how you're being added to an active license. Um, please send your email, please send your question to the licensing email, and this can be, um, go to a, it can be you're adding on as a non-qualifying individual, then you will need to add, uh, send us a, submit in a separate application, but if you're coming on, as a qualifying individual, then it will be a separate application. So if you were to send your question to the licensing email and it's been provided in the chat, uh, we can provide you with the correct application, okay? But in order for you to be added on to an existing CLCD license, you will have to submit that via an application, okay? Um, Francisco asked, does CSOB offer classes directly or is everything third party? We do not offer classes. We do not, um, we're not partnering with any classes, so um, no, we don't do we don't offer any classes for um, to to for the, our classifications. So the next one is from Ascending Awareness. Is there anything different a five hundred one charity needs to do in order to get a B general contractor's license? And it looks like a follow up with our CEO of the five hundred one has decades of experience. So we're looking for four years of experience in the classification that you would be applying for. Uh, the charity, the we don't get into business structures. We uh, license entities and that can be either a sole owner, a corporation, an LLC, a partnership. So that would be uh, now corporations can be nonprofit or corporations or other, that's up to the individual of how they want to set up their business structure. Uh, but we license those various entities. Uh, and then whoever is going to be the qualifier of that entity that you want to license would just need four years of journeyman or higher level experience in the last four or last 10 years. Uh, to apply for that particular classification. So uh, working under a, another B general contractor can gain them that experience. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of things like Habitat for Humanity, just working as a, a volunteer or something like that doesn't gain them the experience uh, because most of those bring in uh, contractors from the outside. Uh, so we would have to look at the experience in that particular situation uh, to evaluate whether that experience falls within the uh, journeyman or higher level experience. Okay, I'm going to jump back to Francisco's question. For classes, are you referring to like apprenticeship programs? If so, that would be something that the Department of Industrial Relations kind of goes in. They do have a website that they have available. I'll include that in the chat as well. So that way you can take a look at uh, what apprenticeship programs and where they're available as far as like the county and the type of occupation that you're looking for. So if that's something that any of you are interested in looking at, um, the DIR website, which is the Department of Industrial Relations, does offer uh, a, a section there that will be able to help you either if you need a, an apprenticeship program or if you're interested in any of that, you can look at it and narrow it by county and the occupation see if that will help you out gain the work experience. Um, so the next question is, uh, it looks like uh, Fabian, if residents with the parents and a permit was obtained for the job, does a work done at the project apply as an owner builder or will it require a written statement by the parent? 
So if it if the permit wasn't pulled by you, but it was a uh, pulled by your parents or someone else and you did the work on it. So that wouldn't technically, that wouldn't really uh, count as an owner builder. That would be something that's called a construction management project. So that's something that you can also uh, obtain a form from the website. Um, we, you can, we have an option where you can order the forms and that's something that you can just search on our website by going to our main homepage and using the search box. You can just type in order forms and they'll, they'll, you'll be able to have a, uh, a list of what applications that you'll be able to do as far as form forms forms that you need. Um, but the but going back to that question, uh, permit pulled by someone else, not yourself. That's not that's not uh, counted as owner builder. Okay. Um, uh, Fabian, I think this one is the second question that you asked. Will an open court case for a DUI affect my application? So. That's something that's very specific of whether it's like criminal convictions and all that. It's all on a case by case basis. What I would recommend is if you want to email our criminal background unit and be able to, like, they'll be able to further assist you as far as specifics like that. They'll be able to, uh, depending on the severity and all of that and what's going on, they'll be able to tell you if it's a, a yes or no. That's something that's very specific and we, we don't really want to. Uh, guarantee or not guarantee anything there. So I'm going to include their, their email in the chat so that way you'll be able to send them an email if you want. You can include a phone number so that way you can try to explain what's going on and be able to better assist them. Uh, So the next question we have on our end is from Haven. This is, could you be a licensed B contractor and still work under another licensed contractor within their LLC? For example, um, a father is licensed and son wants to get licensed and continue to work in the family business. Um, you are talking about an LLC here. So the father is licensed and the son wants to get licensed, continue to work in the family LLC. So. So let's let's do the first part. Can you be a licensed B contractor and still work under another licensed contractor within their LLCs? Um, yes, you can, though you cannot hold two classification, the same classification and the same um, license, if that makes sense. So if the LLC you're talking about is already a B class and your dad, that's your dad and they have the B classification and then you have a B and you want to work under there, you can, but there can only be one qualified individual. So you will have to decide if it's going to be your dad who holds the B or you who's going to hold the B. Okay. Um, the example you gave was that the father is licensed and the son wants to get licensed and continue to work in the family business. Um, are you talking about transferring the license to the son? If this is an LLC, um, entities are a little different of how you take over business. How um, in this case, because it's an LLC, the father is licensed, the son wants to take over, the son will have to qualify for the classification, and then they can um, remove the father later when the father does retire and the son takes over the license. Um, Haven, I hope that answers your question. If not, um, you can. Again, send us an email with more information so we can um, evaluate the question that you're sending us to make sure that we're answering it correctly for you. Okay. Um, the next one is from Miguel. It says, I answered my question in the Q&A section. Should I send them here? Sorry, Miguel. I did see that we have two separate um, sections. Yes, we do prefer your questions to be in the chat so everyone can see it. Um, Q&A is a little different. So I'm looking at the Q&A. Um, the first question I got from you was, if a sole ownership is selected, do we need to register a secretary of state before the application is submitted? If you are selecting a sole owner, you do you should not be registered as secretary of state. That is for corporations and LLC. So if you select sole owner on your application, you should not um, have a, a secretary of state corporate or LLC number attached to it, okay? Um, the next one, that I see from you is at what point do you need to do your fingerprinting? So once your application is accepted, um, and that's through the initial checkup and everything, we will send you a live scan packet. As mentioned in our um, presentation, our fingerprinting is done through live scan. So once it's accepted, you will get a live scan packet in the mail to do your fingerprint, okay? Um, Oh, 
Okay, the next question is for Francisco. It looks like you have three spread out. So I'm going to try to answer those three uh, at one point. So the first question reads, can I have my father get the license and start the business, then me take over the license, the business later on? He's been in concrete since I was a child. So if your father has the work experience, uh, then he he's able to apply for a or to obtain his own contract or license. Now, depending on the business structure, um, you can either, if it's a corporation or an LLC, for example, that could be something that you can add yourself as an officer or if that whatever you decide to do, if that's something that you can do, then he can be the qualifier. You can add yourself on as an officer. And then at some point, if you're ready to take over, then that will be a separate application for you to, uh, instead of being the officer, you can be the qualifier and replace them. Now, if it's a sole owner license, then that would be a separate application where uh, once the father is ready to retire and you're interested in taking the business over, then that's going to be an, a separate application. It just depends on the situation, but it is possible for your father to get be licensed, take the exams and all of that. And then later on in the future, if you have the work experience and you work alongside your father in the business, um, you are able to apply to either take over the license yourself or depending on the business structure, like I said, you replace the qualifier um, on the corporation or LLC. Um, and this third part, I believe, is, is, is for me as well. It says uh, you're referring to study material. So if you're talking about study guides or anything like that, we do have some available on our website. Again, you can just go to our homepage, cslb.ca.gov. And then from there on our search box, just type in uh, study guides there. It, it'll prompt you on after you click the, the appropriate search result, it'll give you the list of all available classifications that we hold with depending on the trade. And then it also includes the, the law exam as well. So there it'll give you a two page study guide, which is a, it kind of gives you a breakdown of the sections sample questions, and then on the last part of the page, it'll provide you a list of resources of where the questions may come from. And some of those are available on our website as far as publications, like, for example, Get Licensed to Build. That's something that we have available on our website as well as a PDF. We also have the law book available on our website as a PDF. So you just type in um, law book or 2024 law book if you want the most recent edition, and you just uh, go through our search results and it'll be available there as a PDF. Okay, uh, your question, Thomas, on how do you count hours for owner builder? For example, if you're doing a kitchen and, and bathroom uh, renovation yourself at the same time for six months, does it count as six months or does it count as twelve? So depending on, so every case, it's a, it's we there isn't like a guarantee of uh, how we determine that. It's always a case by case basis. But um, what I would suggest is um, if you want to email. Uh, uh, licensing at CSO uh, at CSLB.ca.gov and give us more of a, if you want to do more of a breakdown, we'll be able to give you a, an appropriate answer as far as that. But um, we, we don't really guarantee a specifics as to if you work for this many years, um, does it give you the full amount? It's not necessarily, um, it depends on the, the, the square footage, uh, what specific work was actually done. Um, and, and the more detail that you have, that's where it'll, the classification deputy will review it and make the determination of the appropriate time. So since we don't have all of that, uh, more than likely, that's something that we also can't pre, uh, pre-approve or pre-qualify as well. So the, once you submit your application, if you want to do your owner builder, provide that information and that, that can be reviewed through your projects and, and permits. And after the the final evaluation, and that would that's where the classification definitely will give you the appropriate termination of credit. Yeah. 
The next question is from James. Um, James asked, I had life scanning fingerprinting by Safe and Secure in September 2024 in Los Angeles for a Los Angeles nonprofit. Can that be used for required fingerprinting? Unfortunately, James, you will have to complain it through ours as well. So like I mentioned earlier, once your application um, has been accepted, we will, the life scan packet will be prompt to the mailing address indicated on the application. So you will have to complete that. Um, Francisco, you mentioned um, study material for the law portion. Um, I submitted the link down below for study guides. Um, it's the one at 11, 17 a.m. And when you click on it, it does have study guide for the law and business examination. So if you click on that, you will see the study guide we have for that. Um, Aiden, does site superintendent and project manager experience count towards work experience? Um, again, it's journey level and journey level work. So as a superintendent and project manager, if you are doing journey level work experience, then that will count towards work experience. Okay. Um, um, the next question is by Sh Shaman. Does qualifier responsible to train other employees how to do work and follow safety or only responsible or only responsible for quality of the work and supervising? Shaman, are you asking if that is um if that will grant you the four years? Sorry, I don't quite understand your question. Are you asking if it qualifies who is responsible to train? So pretty much a, I'm a trainer and follow safety, will that grant you the 48 hours? Um, it will have to be journeyman level, okay? So I, I want to say that one doesn't, um, Frank, but you can correct me if I'm wrong on that, okay? Shaman, if you want to be more specific to your question, if you want to feel free to send us an email and that way we'll be able to help you out. But as far as uh, supervising, um, you either. The acceptable work is either. Uh, uh, performing the work yourself by hand or supervising a, a group, either performing the trades themselves. You, uh, supervising subcontractors is not some, or contractors themselves. That's that wouldn't be considered acceptable. Um, but if you want to be more, if you want to go more in detail, feel free to send us an email. We'll be able to help you out. Uh, for the next question, Miguel, if sole ownership is selected, do we need to register at the Secretary of State before the application is submitted? So, sole ownerships are not something that you register with the Secretary of State. That more fall in lines with corporations and LLCs, which are limited liability companies. Uh, sole ownerships are also known as sole proprietors. That would be something that you would uh, register with the county that you'll do the work in. So, for example, if you're going to be working, if your business will be based out of Sacramento, California, an example, you would just go to the Sacramento County's office and register your business. So that would be more of a fictitious name, but that would be something that you would do. Sole ownerships would not are not required to register with the Secretary of State. Uh, Miguel, your second question, at what point do you need to do your fingerprinting? So that would be something in your application process. So once the technician that reviews your information, if everything is acceptable, they'll they'll do what's called posting. That is something that we uh, we say ourselves, it's internal, we have internal, but essentially it's once your application is accepted, it moves forward to the next step. So that would be the testing phase. So while you're doing your testing, um, which is 18 months, you, during that time, you have the option to do your fingerprints. Um, the live scan packet will be mailed to the address and put it for your business. And at that point, you can either do the live scan while you're taking the exam, or you can wait till the last steps of your application, which is called uh, issuance requirements. And that's where, depending on uh, what status you want your license to be, whether it's active, if so, that's where you'll need the insurance requirements, the live scan, that's where you actually need to have it done by. But you, once it's accepted, you're more than welcome to do it from the time that you're doing your testing or wait until the last step to do it. The next question is also from Miguel. 
Um, I have a AS degree in construction and inspection, not management, it's listed on page 10. Will that count towards experience? Um, again, we don't pre-qualify any of the classes and degrees. You will have to submit it in. We, you will have a um, processing tech will review it and let you know how many credits does qualify for it, okay? Um, then our, your next question is follow up on the sole ownership. Do we need a new business name if sole ownership selected? Um, if this is your initial application, then you will um, be asked to, to pretty much name your business. If you want it to just be your name, that's fine. If you do want to name it something else, um, please indicate it on there. Again, once the processing technician um, gets to your application, review it, and we will uh, make sure that your, your business name is aligned with your entity and your classification type, okay? The next question is from Fab Fabian. To clarify, four years experience required can be acquired by different forms put together, such as related construction class taken, construction project experience, and additional personal statements. Um, I we I don't believe we take personal statements, but yes, the four years. And Frank, um, please jump in if I'm um, misinforming. But the four years can be um, gathered with in with the work related experience, the work experience form and classifications together. Um, but I don't think we take personal statements for that. That's that's correct. So uh, for the experience uh, construction related classes. So once again, we're looking for degrees, uh, construction related classes is going to contribute minimal experience to uh, it. So we're looking for certifications of work experience for somebody with firsthand knowledge of the work performed at journeyman level or higher. Uh, construction project experience forms uh, can be done for particular projects. Uh, uh, once again, degrees in education uh, related construction classes is going to get, if anything, will get very minimal. And yes, uh, Tao, uh, as Tao explained, uh, we don't take personal statements. We're looking for the filled out certification of work experience totaling up to four years. Uh, Misfin is asking about, once again, working as a project manager. So we don't look at project managers because that covers a wide uh, area of positions. We're looking at journeyman and higher. So journeyman, foreman, supervising employee or contractor. So uh, project manager, we don't really look at. So if you were a supervising employee, uh, supervising people uh, performing the trade that you're looking to qualify for, uh, in, in your certifier's certification of work experience, you wanna explain how you became a supervising employee. So after years of being an employee, of a construction company, uh, you were promoted to supervisor, and then you had supervisory duties within that company uh, over the employees performing that work. So uh, president, once again, there are many presidents that don't do any of the actual performing of work uh, for experience. So once again, we're looking for four years within the last 10 years of experience at a journeyman or higher level uh, to qualify for the classification that you're looking to perform. Uh, looks like we have, uh, I'm, it looks like I'm asking if a qualifier is responsible for training workers or not. Uh, that's within the structure of your own company of who's going to be responsible for training uh, workers. A qualifier is responsible for all work performed for that license. So regardless of which workers perform it, the qualifier is going to resp be responsible for the everything that happens under that particular license. They are the responsible party for the license. Uh, Francisco has, how fast can I go through the licensing process? What's the average timeline to get licensed? Uh, there really isn't. Uh, it can depend on how many people are applying at the time, uh, depend on how fast uh, you can pass the required testing how fast you supply your uh, 
issuance requirements, your bond, your workers comp after you've passed the test. So there's no way to really put a factor on it other than you can always go online and see what our processing times are so that you can see uh, currently it'll show what date we're working on for applications coming in. I think right now we're in about a two week, two to three week uh, process. So I can tell you for sure that if you submit an application right now, it'll be about two to three weeks before a technician is assigned to actually begin reviewing your application. After that, it's a matter of uh, how quickly you can pass your tests, how quickly you can get your uh, issuance requirements in after passing those tests. All right, does a professional engineering license contribute to any experience? Uh, professional engineers are completely different than construction uh, general engineering. Um, your degree, if you have a degree in engineering, that will count towards experience, but a uh, different form of skills for a professional engineering license uh, compared to a general engineering license. But once again, you can put down the actual experience you have related to general engineering classification, and you can find those specifics on the website under a uh, general A license classification uh, and then list any experience you have performing those trade duties. Uh, will my military experience and title of journeyman or heavy equipment operator and pavement qualify for experience and or waiver for the exam portion currently served four years uh, as of the date in the same AFSC. So military experience can sometimes be used. What you're going to want to send in is your military transcripts uh, with your application. Uh, and then you're still going to need a certifier to certify uh, firsthand knowledge of the work performed. Then they can look at those transcripts to see if some of that uh, experience can translate to whichever classification that you're going into. So uh, heavy equipment operator uh, would probably get you some credit, perhaps towards a C12 or maybe uh, something else. But obviously heavy equipment operator is not going to get you experience towards like a plumbing or an electrician's license. So it really depends on the classification you're going for. But send all of that information in with your application. They'll review it to see if any of it applies to credit. Uh, wouldn't be a waiver. Uh, waiver of exams or for having previously held the uh, classification on another license within the last five years or have completed the testing portion within the last five years. Okay. The sole owner for a, oh, go ahead. Okay, so uh, the next question is from Miguel. It's asking for if a uh, sole owner for a B license will we need workers comp? So a uh, short answer is if you're not gonna have employees under your license, then that is something that you would uh, not need a workers comp uh, workers' compensation policy. Now, um, it depends on the uh, classifications. There is a certain list of classifications that currently are required a workers' compensation policy, regardless of whether they need uh, a workers' compensation policy or not, whether or not you have employees. So uh, currently the, the B, which is the general building classification, that one does not fall into that list. So if you're looking for specific as to that which classification is old, you can, you can definitely look at both our own page website and then type in uh, bulletin or press releases there in our industry bulletin, you'll be able to see uh, which classifications currently require the uh, the plastic or the workers' compensation policy. And you can look back and our archive them throughout the years. I believe the the workers' compensation policy list is under 2023. But if you have any additional questions or would like us to share that list with you, feel free to send us an email. I provided that email again in our chat so that way you'll be able to if you want additional information or if you want to be more specific on the questions, feel free to do that. But to answer your question, if you're not going to have employees for that B license, um, you, you can submit that workers' compensation exemption. 
Uh, next one, uh, Fabian. Uh, so looks like some clarification on owner builder. So once again, owner builder, as you will notice on an older owner builder construction project experience form is for your personal residence. So if you're doing work on your parents' home, that would not quite qualify for owner builder. It may qualify for uh, experience in uh, the trades that you're performing. But once again, owner builder is for your own owned residence building and just towards the B uh, general building uh, project. So you could still list what you had performed and that would be more like self-employed work that you did for your parents. Uh, but once again, you just need a certifier on your certification of work experience for someone who has firsthand knowledge of the work that you had performed. Uh, if uh, you did work that required permits and had inspections, there is a secondary form called just a construction project experience form that you can fill out listing the address of where you did the work, which would be your parents home. Uh, the permits pulled, what those permits were for, square footage. It looks similar to the owner builder construction experience uh, project form, but it's just a general construction project experience form that's used many times for self-employed work, not related to owner builder. I included in the chat the industry bulletin of where uh, the additional or the classifications that require a workers' compensation policy. So if you're able to uh, use a link to follow through and look at the industry bulletin, if not, you're you're more than welcome to look through our search uh, menu on our uh, CSOB website, and they'll be able to break it down as well. There, show you the industry bulletins that we have from uh, past, but as well as the workers' compensation policy. Alrighty, well, give it a couple more minutes for any last questions. Um, great questions today, you guys. <laughs> um, again, this is going to be archived, so you can go back and review it if you, you know, maybe thought of something or you remembered a question that someone else asked and you thought of it as well. Um, these videos will be archived. Um, again, we're just going to wait a couple more minutes for any last minute questions and then um, we're going to wrap it up. Okay, so that's all the time we have today for our workshop. Thank you for all of your questions. If you have any other questions about your application, we encourage you to drop an email to our licensing division. Um, the, like, the email is on the, on the screen right now. Our email is licensing at cslb.ca.gov. If at some point you need to reschedule your exam, you can get that process started by dropping an email to exams with an S at cslb.ca.gov. We've also put together a list of available resources for women considering a career in construction. If you haven't already, be sure to download this presentation to get them. You can download the presentation on the banner on the top of our homepage, www.cslb.ca.gov. If you're watching the archive video of this workshop on our YouTube page, you'll find a link to the presentation down below. We welcome your comments and topics for future webcasts.
just drop drop us an email to social at cslb.ca.gov. Special thanks to our licensing division and public affairs office for their help on this workshop. The Get Licensed to Build workshop is a copyrighted production of the California Contractor State License Board. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a good day.